from PRX. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends beyond the binary, and all get ready, get set, bakers. It's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And my patron peeps, what up, my patron peeps? How, how are all of you? And you might be saying, what in the name of, like, uh, what in the name, is this show, is, would you consider this show like a double aught flour or a whole wheat flour or a, you know, alternative non-wheat flour, all-purpose flour? Uh, it's, well, I mean, if I had to call my, I mean, for me, I'm a rye, like, uh, my preferred fr- flour is rye flour, uh, or what was the name of that skunk? Wasn't there a skunk called Flower once upon a time? I mean, you know what it is? Flowery, flowering, flowery prose is what's coming at you. Like a poof of flour uh, before you touch that dough. It's time for sleep with me. It'd be, and if you're looking for something that makes sense, I don't know. Uh, what do you say we get on with the show? And Sleep With Me is here to support you, so if you ever need any extra resources for self-care, for your mental health, or to support the black members of our community, you could check our show notes, because black lives matter, and you taking the steps you need uh, to, to enact change and take care of yourself and take care of the members of our community is very important. So, uh, yeah, what do you say we uh, get on with? The next part is uh, who helps us bring this podcast twice a week. You can always check that out when your hand hits the fridge tomorrow at Sleep With Me podcast com slash sponsors. Thanks. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. I don't know if you've been to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash P-A-T-R-O-N-F-E-E-D. If you're a patron and you don't have your uh, patron bonus content, it's not really even bonus content. It's your membership. It has so many episodes, so many different styles. You can create playlists from that work for you. So if you haven't set it up in your patron, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed, or if you want to become a patron, you say, Scoots, I'm looking for episodes without the jingles, or I'm looking for all-night episodes. I like intro episodes. I like the story-only episodes. I don't like, you know, I I want episodes without the thank yous. I want more Ray. It's all there. Between $5 and $20 a month, you could be an annual patron. You'll get a month free. You get the pride in knowing, wow, I'm a part of an amazing community of a podcast that not just helps me, but helps hundreds of thousands of other people every single night fall asleep. You could sign up, or if you're already a patron, Please get it set up. Sleep with me podcast.com slash patron feed. You could sign up to be a patron, or if you do it from your phone and you're already a patron, you just log in, click allow. You can pick from a list of podcast apps and you could subscribe. Uh, that's sleep with me podcast.com slash patron feed. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Better Help. You know, if you're having trouble meeting your goals right now, difficulty relationships, trouble sleeping, or if you're feeling stressed or depressed, Better Help is available. Better Help offers online professional counselors who can listen and help. And I've talked about this a lot on the podcast is that I've had a, a lot of struggles throughout my lifetime with mental health and with uh, self medication and stuff. And working with professional licensed therapists has given me the tools to function and flourish in my life. And that's one of the things I'm so grateful for is the relationship I have with my therapist, someone I can talk to who can listen and help me. And with BetterHelp, you simply fill out a questionnaire to assess your needs and BetterHelp will match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. And this isn't self-help or a crisis. Crisis line. This is secure online professional counseling. BetterHelp counselors have a broad range of expertise, which may not be available in your area. Their service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send unlimited messages to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, and everything you share is confidential. You don't have to worry about going to the office or sitting in a waiting room. 
BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so it's easy and free to change counselors if needed. So you can find someone you're comfortable talking to and working with. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. And this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Sleep With Me listeners can get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash sleep with me. So visit betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash sleep with me. And you can join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced BetterHelp professional. Thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots. Have you taken the Helix Sleep Quiz yet? It's at helixsleep.com slash sleep. It's a two-minute sleep quiz where Helix Sleep will match you with a customized mattress that's going to give you the best sleep of your life. And I'm so happy that we were able to give away a brand new mattress to Abby and a weighted blanket to Guadalupe. People out there, they spent 2020 and 2021 working on behalf of other people. I'm so happy to have a partnership with a company that encourages good sleep and then backs it up uh, with people supporting the sleep of others. But here's what, make it it simple. I absolutely love my Helix bed. My siblings, there's so many people in my family that my daughter just took the Helix sleep quiz. I don't know if I shared this. She's got her Helix on the way to her mom's house uh, so she can be sleeping in a Helix. So have your kids take the quiz too. You know, compare your results or take the Helix sleep quiz with your partner and it'll match you to a mattress that's a perfect compromise for both your sleep preferences. And I don't know if you knew this, in addition to being part of our great giveaway, Helix offers exclusive discounts for teachers, students, military, and first responders. They make amazing bedding and they support the podcast that puts you to sleep. So I don't know what you're waiting for. It's helixsleep.com slash sleep. Take that two minute sleep quiz. There's so many mattress models to choose from, whether you want something soft, medium, firm, something that's going to cool you down if you sleep hot. Uh, They have the Helix plus size mattress for plus size folks. You know, I'm sleeping on the Helix Dusk. I absolutely love it. I sleep hot. I sleep on my side. I sleep on my stomach. It's perfectly matched to the way I sleep to give me a good night's sleep. Their beds have a 10-year warranty and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. And they'll even pick it up if you don't love it, but I know you will. The mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free, so you don't ever have to go to a mattress store or schedule delivery through some company or try to say, what what, what do you mean? I got to pay extra for delivery? Are you kidding me? Not with Helix. Helix Sleep. You get a mattress customized to you, to your door, and if you buy it right now, you get an unbelievable deal. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's helix, H-E-L-I-X sleep.com slash sleep. That's up to $200 off and two free pillows. Share with me your unboxing videos. Share with me your setup videos. I love it. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. Time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The one part of the podcast I need you here to where I pop my peas, if you please. I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. Let the sponsors know about it. That's how we keep the sponsors. They know this is a good place to be. They know they're supporting free listens to the podcast, and they get supported back. So it really does create a nice little cycle there. Uh, and I'm looking for Supporter Zone members and members for our Dream Door Society, which hasn't even opened up. It's a secret society. Society. Uh, if you want to be a member of the Dream Door Society, if you support All Form, you get a new All Form sofa, you share on social media. Not only will you get an amazing sofa and support the show, you'll get into the Dream Door Society. So check out All Form on our sponsor page. You deserve a brand new sofa anyway, so why don't you get one that you could design how you want it? Uh, so that's the first part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need. And there's links to organizations in the show notes you can connect with and it's about supporting the members of our community through change and action actions that say black lives matter that say stop aapi hate and one organization i recommend supporting is beam you could go to beam.community or just google beam or just use the links in our show notes but beam is a black emotional and mental health collective a group of therapists lawyers religious leaders teachers psychologists and advocates and activists all working together 
together for mental, emotional health and healing in the black community. You can learn more, you can connect with them, or you could support them uh, by using the link in the show notes or going to beam.community. And that is the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Zone. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes Kenny too. Scotty and Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mr. Bard. I'm at Dear Scooter on Twitter. Twitter. You know what? You could get me through our website or on social media. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Thanks. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing? Trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, uh, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever is keeping you awake. Uh, whether you know, so, so if it's thoughts, like things on your mind that you're thinking about, about the past, present, or future, or yourself, or, you know, oh boy, or, you know, all those things... Uh, so it could be thoughts, could be feelings or emotions coming up for you or that are already there, uh, that it could be remains from the day. Was that a book and a film, The Remains of the Day? I, I remember, like, uh, that must have won some Oscars at some point. Um, and I said, that seems like too much of a serious... Is that one of those movies that... Uh, and I don't know, but, but like uh, that, I said, was that, was that is that one that I'll have trouble sitting still for? What's the runtime on that? Will I be asking myself how much time remains in remains of the day? Uh, will it be exacerbated by my, you know, if I will I have to hide my device so I could pay attention? And will I be thinking about? The, uh, oh yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. So. Oh it, could, oh, it could be feelings from the remains of the day. It could be anticipatory feelings. It could be physical sensations. Whatever is keeping you awake, hopefully I'll come back to that. It, like, uh, whatever is keeping you awake, I'm here to distract you from that and take your mind off of that. Keep you company, really, as you fall asleep. And what I propose to do, as I said, is create a safe place. And ideally, just a safe place means like there's no expectations on your end. For me, I don't expect much of you. Now, I, I guess I said that in a way like someone that's already di- they, like uh, already disappointed. Oh, boy, sorry about that. That's just my natural. Uh, what is that? Eeyore? You know that Eeyore part of me. But I do mean there's no pressure on you. Well, we'll get to that. But but I mean like you, you know what I mean. If you're a regular listener, if you're new, you don't. That's why I'm trying to over-explain it. But a safe place means you don't have to really do much. Uh, this is here for you. And I don't know what else I forgot. I got, for, I got mixed up. But what, what I'll also do is, you know, I'll rub it up, pat it. I'll say safe place. Uh, then I'll send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'll use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. Uh, so I'll go off topic. I'll get mixed up. I'm going to use filler words, pregnant pause. It, you know, well, not pregnant pauses. I'll use pauses that normally you'd say, is that a pregnant pause? And you say, nope, no, just a, it's just a pause, just an overwrought pause. I don't know. But here's the thing. If you're new, I'm glad you're here. Let me give you some information like, uh, about the show because like i said there's like i want to 
I want to respect your expectations and also try to uh, work with them. Because if you've if this is your first time listening to the show, it's like, oh boy, what is this? What have I already listened to? Because structurally, I don't normally start about talk about this up front, but the show's very different structurally. Start, starts off with a greeting, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends beyond the binary, and bake, star bakers, or every baker's a star baker in my book. And that does not do, do like, uh, whatever, just because, because you, whatever, I don't want to get into a debate about how many star bakers can there be? And I'd say, well, as many as I'd like, you're the star baker asking that question. You're double star baker, but that goes to the, oh, well, structure the show. Let me, so, so it starts off with that. So, you know, you're welcome. Then there's business. That's how we were able to bring you the podcast, uh, twice a week for free and not part of a paid service. And that's about four or six minutes long in the business. And I don't even think it, like that's mixed in with also the supporter business, which is to support you as a listener. Then there's an intro, which we've just started. The intro is around 16 to 20 minutes long. Really no business in the intro. Though sometimes people, when they don't, don't like the structure of the show, they, they, I don't know, they don't notice it. Really, the intro is a slow wind down where I try to explain what the podcast is unsuccessfully. I don't, I'm not able to do it in a concise and quick way, but that also serves the purpose of getting, you know, getting some distance from the remains of the day. And I'm just, I don't even know right now if Remains of the Day came out. I want to say the one of the Irons was in it. Jeremy, I, well, okay, so I guess Michael Ironside is, could be one of the Irons. Though Jeremy Irons and Michael Ironside, I don't think Michael Ironside was in it. Probably Jeremy Irons could have been in it. Or is it Jeffrey Irons? Uh, or Jeffrey Lyons may have reviewed the show, movie. But I don't know if that movie came out 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, aughts, whatever they're calling the thing between 10 and 20. Uh, and then, so I don't know. I say, well, when did that movie come out? I have no idea. Who's that? Jim Caviezel? I don't know how to say his name. I said, well, he could be in it, but probably not. Uh, Helen Mirren, that, you say, if a movie was named Remains of the Day, and it was made between in the mid '90s to to present day. I'd say, well, I'd put a seventy percent chance Helen Mirren was in it, and and that's why I was so successful. But I don't know if it was before. I'd say before 1998. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think, you say, well, who? Well, if if it was not that this these two are related. But I'd say before 1998, if it was called Remains of the Day, I'd just say Robert Redford was probably in it, maybe. Um, you see the why, why? I don't know why. Just part of my part of my movie brain is saying, well, yeah. It was an Oscar winner or, or up for an Oscar. It just sounds like it would be. Sounds like one of those languid movies. So, like you say, what's so? Tell me about the movie. Well, it takes place in a country estate, uh, and uh, there's like a lot of feelings. There's something that happens, and then people deal with that, and then they change as people. Then they have to deal with their changes. Not everyone's straightforward about it. Then someone returns from a journey. Someone else goes on a journey. There's a, there's a lot of eating in rooms with great sunlight. Uh, that's remains of the. I don't know. That's my made up review of remains of the day. Oh, what remains of this? Explaining what the podcast is. So the intro goes on and on and on, so that you get some distance from the day. It eases you into bedtime. So for if you're new, it's definitely uh, strange because you say, "What? Do you, what? When's the podcast start?" When is he going to get to a point? And as, as you become a regularist and you realize, oh, never. Like, uh, and you see, Remains of the Day is my favorite movie. It was an action movie. And I'd say, really? Well, no, it was a movie. It, it, it moved me, I guess you'd say. 
say sorry. I wasn't making fun of it. I was just trying to remember. I don't remember much anyway. Okay, but so the intro goes on and on and on so that you ease into bedtime or as you get ready for bed. It just, yeah, get, 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 yeah, whatever. It helps you get, like, uh, let the day remain where it was in the past. Don't worry, I'll, I'll look it up in uh, in a few minutes and, and after I record this. If I remember, I, I, a lot of times, just like when people wake up, I'll stop recording. i be like, what was I thinking about in that intro? I don't know. Uh, like, and I won't listen to this for a few months, I record it months before it comes out. Anyway, so that's remains. Oh, so that's the intro. Then there's business. That's how podcast structure works. So the business is there to keep the show free. Then there's an, our episode. We'll be running through Great British Bake Off a baking show and talking about that in a very meandering and, and, and indirect and slow and enjoyable way. And then there's the thank you. So, so that's the structure of the show. A couple other things to talk about if you're new. One is if you're skeptical or doubtful. I mean, the, the, the structure can be a part of that, but also the expectations. Like, one, I don't expect you to listen to the show, though you may at first try to do that. You, you can just kind of barely listen is the best way to do it. And you'd say, uh, like... Uh, like, yeah, I don't know. I was trying to think of a metaphor or something I could use remains of the day. But kind of like in my brain. I mean, when I'm trying to remember remains of the day, the main thing I remember is that it was a, a lauded film, a lauded, I think, and that it, the, the name of it. And then I just picture, and I'm not kidding, I picture like a field of wheat with the sun, the sun, and maybe some lens flare, maybe one of those things that you blow on and you make a wish, a dandel, dandelion fluff. And maybe just in the distance, like a farmhouse or something or a barn. And Or it could be that, but a, country, a stone country estate. Because uh, you say, oh, no, it takes place in England. Oh, okay, so there's a, an estate there. And so that's what I mean by barely listening. At some point, I was barely paying attention. When that was, when, I probably watched the Oscars. It may have won Best Film. And you say, Scooch, isn't this your favorite uh, actress? As an, don't you love Helen Mirren? Well, she wasn't in that movie. I said, oh, okay. Should have been. I mean, maybe they would have won double Oscars if she was in it. And this, also, there's no one named Jeremy Ironside. And I'd say, are you sure on the planet, or you mean like an actor? What about Jenny Ironside? If I if I ever have a personal trainer, that's who I'd like to be my personal trainer, Jenny Ironside. Jenny Irons. No, it's not easy to say. I'll have to think of it. Tammy Ironside. Oh, uh, anyway, so. Oh, don't really listen to this podcast. I think I made that point. Also, the strange thing is this podcast is not really here to put you to sleep. It's here to keep you company while you fall asleep. Uh, that's why the shows are about an hour. It's just to give you plenty of time to drift off. And if you can't sleep, I'm going to be here to the very end for you. So it, whether you're awake or asleep, I'm here to keep you company, to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar cuz, your boar sib, your boar bestie. I'm here. I'm here for you. So that's why I'm here. I'm here to keep you company as you drift off. Uh, but if you're awake or you wake back up or whatever, I'm here to keep you company too. So it's kind of like a dual role. Uh, then, uh, what's that? Oh, I forgot. What, don't need to listen to me. No pressure. Fall asleep. Oh, give the show a few tries. That's the other thing. And I don't say this out of desperation or need or anything. I just say it because almost everybody that regularly listens to the show says give it two or three tries because it's different and that's okay and it's also okay if you don't like it that, that's one of the things i like to point out is important too you know the show's here to try to put you to sleep but, but it doesn't put everybody to sleep it's both an acquired taste and it, when it's an acquired taste it's just not for everybody but i hope it's for you and the best way to find out is like to not listen to it and listen not listen to it two or three tries two or three times uh because they don't really gain anything like with the number of listeners. It's just the number of listeners that are actively involved in the show. So there's not any 
anything crafty. In fact, like, a, I don't know if I haven't kept up the website, but I used to have a website, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. And I should probably update it with more other sleep podcasts that you could check out if you're looking for something. Uh, and the sleep with me does not work for you. Um, but it, it, if it should, it should still be up and it should have good options. Um, what else? Uh, don't need to listen to me. No pressure to fall asleep. The show's very different. Not everybody likes it. It's okay to be skeptical or doubtful. The reason I make the show is because I believe you deserve a good night's sleep. It's really what it comes down to. You deserve a place you could rest. And along with that, if you get some rest, you're going to be able to live your life a little bit more. Your life will be a little bit more manageable or pleasurable. And then our world's going to be a better place. And you say, well, pish posh, that's not. And I say, no, that's true. Uh, and I know how it feels. I've been there tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble st- staying asleep, all those things. And uh, I, so I know how it feels. And, and so if I can help you, it would really be my honor because they say, well, I know I, I know what it's like to dread bedtime. And I want to make a podcast. Uh, or, and my goal with this show is that you say, well, I'm not, well, I got bedtime coming up. At least I got scoots there. And hopefully he's yeah he is actually going on IMDb right now to 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 just uh, ease my mind which he doesn't normally do and type in remains of the day remains of the day oh boy I was close uh, so Anthony Hopkins is in it and uh, Emma Thompson Christopher Reeve. Um, yeah, and it looks like the cover is of, uh, Anthony Hopkins and, uh, Emma Thompson. Let's see if it was based on a book or something. I don't know, but yeah, uh, let's see. Oh yeah. It was a merchant. Is it, it was, a, it's James Ivory. I don't know if it was a merchant ivory movie. I guess so. What was that? Uh, 1990, what year did I say? 1993. Um, so, oh yeah, I get, well, I just turned my phone. I was going to look up, I, I think it's based on a novel, but anyway, so I'm here, um, oh, to go off topic, just like I just did to keep you company because I really want to help you fall asleep. So give it a few tries. I really appreciate you coming by and checking the show out. I really hope I can help you. I really, I yearn and I strive. I really hope I can help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to bring you this podcast a choice a week on the regular. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive, one of the country's leading providers of auto insurance. With Progressive's Name Your Price tool, you could say what kind of coverage you're looking for and how much you want to pay, and Progressive will help you find options that fit within your budget. Use the Name Your Price tool and start an online quote today at Progressive.com. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey, patrons, I was just record or hey, everybody, I was just recording for uh, 20 minutes, no, 10 minutes, uh, and uh, none of it got recorded. So the thing is, I was only on page three of my notes. So here we are, we're talking about uh, Collection 6, Episode 7, Vegan Week. It opens with uh, the teaser, you know, the thing of like everything not going well. And everybody working, couple jokes, soggy bottoms, stiff peaks, and then we have our little comet, oh, toppling towers of uh, baking, and then we have our comet, like the the intro. Then we have a comedy sequence. Noel singing a song he wrote called Vegan Week. I'm a happy cow now because it's Vegan Week. There's no dairy and meat. Why don't you chop up a leek because it's Vegan Week? And he, him and Sandy are sitting in uh, director's chairs, blue ones that say Sandy, Noel, Paul, Prue. Paul and Prue's are empty. There's a dancing cow, like someone, two people dressed as a cow. And she says, you write that song? He goes, yeah, it's Moo Wave, a new kind of music. Uh, and these things, again, why don't you chop up a leak? They also make a joke of, like, that's Paul and Prue and the cow, and poor Prue's behind Paul. You know, and he had beans for breakfast or whatever, sausage. 
So that's your comedy sequence to start, um, director's chairs. Then we have the talking head sequence. Brian, he talks about last week winning. And then, oh boy, you know, what does that mean? John kind of talks about that he doesn't eat a lot of vegetables or vegan food. Kim Joy says, Jesus is going to be tense. Uh, Ruby says, oh gosh, I can't believe what a dream that they brought out Vegan Week for the first time ever. And uh, then we get ready for the, sig- is this the signature challenge? Uh, yeah. And they say, okay, no meat, eggs, butter, or honey. Uh, and uh, Noel makes a joke. He has a friend, Ralph, though, who's a bee. But they're supposed to make eight savory tartlets, four with two, each with two, four of two sets of four in different fillings, with a vegan short cut, cut, cut pastry that no one would be able to tell is vegan. Noel and Sandy also have amazing shirts on each of them, though Noel's shirt may be more of like a light jacket. Then everybody starts prepping, and then they're saying, oh, go, it's going to be hard making vegan stuff. Uh, you know, the challenge is usually you use butter in eggs to create a short pastry. But that's an option here, so you got to create texture somehow. And Peru says, you know, you got to deliver on the flavor, which they can do, but can they do it vegan style? So we go outside, everybody says, okay, well, in convention, you would say, okay, you'd have butter. Or, but So you need some kind of fat man, and says, with a butter ban, first alliteration. And to get a golden finish, you could use coconut oil, olive oil, avocado oil. Some people are using um, whatever, uh, vegetable shortening, vegan margarine is what uh, our uh, vegetable oil and vegan Ruby's using. Uh, So everybody's getting their stuff together. They had two hours to do it. Uh, Delicate balance. Uh, Bryony's making French onion tartlets and some sort of celerac and apple tartlet. A little root vegetables. and Bruce concerned that it's going to be too sweet and it's supposed to be savory. So she says, warning. Uh, John, he's not into vegan weeks, but he's making falafels and hummus for one. And then garlics and mushrooms. Uh, Paul's very quiet this week, they say, uh, because it's vegan week. Manon is making summer and winter charts. Uh, Let's see, right now the TV's on, or my t- tablet's on John. And uh, they're talking about, yeah, making one by one. Okie dokie, I'm going to have a go. Uh, then Manon's talking about her summer and winter tartlets. Um, the summer's ratatouille. 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 It's two T's, I know. I have to apologize to my friend Chris because he used to he worked at Pixar when that movie came out, and I still would disagree with him and say, "No, no, it's Ratatouille," and he'd say, "No, it's not." Uh, and I'd say, "And I'd say, well, I think it is." So I'm sorry because that can be really a, a pain. But now I can just say I have no idea how to pronounce it anymore because it got so mixed up. Uh, everybody's talking about not getting a saggy bottom. Uh, when they do their, you know, their, 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 that's like a definite with making the tarts. It's a concern. Uh, we got to talk about Sandy's shirt, which has dragonflies, moths, and even, a, um, what is that, pink flamingo on it, I think. I, I don't know. I don't have a view of it. Uh, dragonfly, chill that dough, yo. Rahul is roasting roasted vegetable roses. Uh, then Noel gives him a hard time. Are you being positive this week? He goes, no, no, no. I'm just counting my days down. He goes, well, but you're not being negative, are you? He goes, you're going to be dancing around in this tent one day. He goes, yeah, I don't know about that. Bryony's caramelizing onions. There's a lot of prep going on. Uh, falafels. Uh, 
Ruby's talking about how her leaks could cause soggy bottom. And then she has nutritional yeast, which uh, I feel like that's popular in California. I think it's popular in other places, but they kind of seem surprised and they don't even want to smell it. Sandy says full pass, but uh, Paul says, oh, interesting. That's interesting. Like, And uh, I think Bruce says, yeah, kind of like Parmesan. Uh, but yeah, even in the daily harvest meals, they have uh, one with nutritional yeast that's really good. It's called the cheese bowl with a Z. Uh, Sandy says, I had to give it up. Maybe she's serious. I don't know. Then Brian, or, uh, Kim Joy talks about tofu. She says it's bean curd, right? She's making like a tofu quiche. And she says normally she has her tofu with soy sauce. She really enjoys it. Manon talks oh Manon talks about a soggy bottom too, as blind baking begins. I liked that triple oration. And also the coolest thing I ever said in the episode is uh Kim Joy says squirrel squirrels are cool. She also says uh, you know I'm not a, really an animal person. I love animals uh, for art, uh, but I don't spend a lot of time around them. Uh John's behind schedule. He has a nice shirt on. It's like a lemon shirt with a blue background. Then Noel appears with like a pineapple, plastic pineapple drink and an inflatable flip-flop, like a pool float for like the, the timer. Everybody's putting their beans in and trying to figure out, oh, with the beans in their tartlets, how long do they need to go for? Uh, then they, oh, there's also, we see all these like in the behind Noel and Sandy, some like outdoor garden stuff, uh. If one hour left, John says, man, I'm behind. Noel says, don't worry, I'm a time lord. Do you want me to change time for you? Oh, let me see. We got to wait. Let's pause it here on Sandy and Noel so we can talk about it. Sandy's shirt also has. So originally I thought it was a dragonfly shirt. Then I said, no, no, there's moths on there. Now I see that there's also a flamingo and some dinosaurs. So her shirt just gets cooler and cooler. And then Noel's shirt, his is like more of a silken satin type shirt or sateen. And again, it could be a zip up jacket. It's uh, comic book panels. I don't know if it's from a specific comic book or it's just a style of the shirt because I don't have uh, like, uh, I haven't been able, I'll, I'll try to pause it if we get really close. Uh, I don't know if there's any super, my, my, I don't have the, what do you call that, uh, resolution to see something super zoomed. Okay, so we get bean, more beans cooking, butternut squash, uh, people adding ingredients, John's uh, frying his falafels, turmeric paste, uh, uh, then we go to another time check, Nolan Sandy are playing croquet outside. Oh, there's Raul. He's making a, a chickpea curry. Ruby's like, man, that smells good. Noel keeps stop. He does a lot of stopping by Ruby's stop. I don't know what's going on with those two. Uh, even John just shook his head. He's like, wait a second. Uh, everybody's trying to deal with their beans. Uh, beans are smelling. Beans are getting measured. I want to see this croquet chef, so I'm trying to pay attention for it. Uh, second stage of my blind baking. Uh, hopefully, now that I've removed the baking beans, so these will cook in eight minutes. Uh, everybody's looking. Frying falafels, says John. Looks like he had a card at the end of his station, like a greeting card. I thought it was uh, his tamarind pace in there, too. Uh, let's see. They're, they're playing croquet. Uh, half an hour left. Uh, Sandy runs back. No, no, no. That's my ball. She says, she, and, uh, Noel says, straight through. Uh, there's some shrinkage because it was too hot. Raul now says, soggy bottom. Then there's an assembly sequence. Man and French fool. Oh, French food. French food is simple and delicious. Uh, got it. A cheese alternative, double question mark. Uh, 
then Noel says, like, uh, mouse beds, uh, man in little trays, because she has uh, rectangular tart trays for one of her tarts, where most people have circular ones for all their tarts. Oh, goat's cheese alternative is what Brian is using. I said, wait, well, like, uh, here's an alternative to goat's cheese. No, no goat's cheese, because I taste the goat in goat's cheese. Yeah, so there's her little tarts, uh, like mouse bed. So cute. Uh, then everything goes back in the oven. John runs out of filling. He's in a rush. Uh, I think Noel says you got a vegan or bust or something. And then everybody assumes Kim Joy is vegan because of her style, which I guess I said, what? My daughter said, well, come on, Dad. Uh, uh, so they, like, think she's a vegan expert, but really she's just cool. She, like, thinks squirrels are cool. He goes, oh, he is, and Noel says, you look like you might know your way around a vegan restaurant. Uh, you just have a vegan air about you. He goes, yeah, I guess. Uh, John says, I'm not going to be star baker. Uh, he's something about tart, tart. He says, tardy. He dropped one of his tarts on the floor. And they're not even cooked. Uh, and he said, I'll just leave them in the oven as long as I can. Oh, Ruby says tardy. Uh, five minutes. Someone uses the D word uh, because they're running behind. Oh, I think because people are like touching the hot thing because it's because uh, of the timing. Uh, um, Kim Joy's making an invisible squirrel out of acetate. I got to figure out what this acetate stuff is. Uh, Five minutes left. Manon says, make it pretty. Uh, buy a stem. I don't know what that means. Uh, let's see. There's the squirrel acetate with paprika. Everybody's making their assembly. What would be good would be like one of these tarts, but with uh, um, Thanksgiving food. You could do it all in one tart. I'm definitely doing that for Thanksgiving, for, for prep of Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving tart. Uh, wouldn't be vegan, of course. Uh, oh, he, she puts a nut. She gives the squirrel a little nut. Maybe that's what it was. One minute, one vegan minute. Oh, yeah. Everybody's putting their stuff at the end. Final touches, big music. And uh, then the last, you know, last for pieces of touch. Uh, and then they say, time is up. John frowns outside. They do outside shots. Uh, then we have the judges. They say, man, and okay, looks good. Well baked. It cuts through. Bruce says it's mild but delicious. Uh, coconut works. Uh, very good, uh, decent jib. That doesn't mean it makes sense. A, d a decent job, I would say. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ruby, they say the shape is good. Paul says I can taste uh, the broccoli on, on, on something. Pastry's nice. Can't taste anything else, so. Uh, Paul is not, says something doesn't like green on his tomatoes. Overall. Uh, sage, nothing extra, something. We'll see what it says. Man and that are tapping. Rahul, lovely, too much feeling, crumbly, but holding together. Bruce shakes her head. This is poetry. Wow, poetry melts in your mouth. Fantastic. Thank you. And everyone is like dancing with joy when Rahul gets appraised. Uh, uh, they say, Brian, yours feels a bit flexible, rubbery, so weird. It tastes like apple pie. Second one is better, very nice, and uh, the onions are more like hot dog onions. Uh, okay, let's go back to Ruby's because I couldn't read my writing. Consistent in color, good start, good shapes. Uh, how'd you get out with the cheese mixture? Uh, I think it tasted good. Paul tasted, he says, uh, yeah, I, went out, I can taste the broccoli, and I can taste the broccoli. Oh, that's what he said, broccoli twice. 
It says underwhelming. I was expecting more flavor. Pastry's nice, so. Uh, but yeah, and Bruce says, I can taste a tiny bit of chili, and that's it. Broccoli and chili. Oh, Paul doesn't like green on his tomatoes. Like, he says, cut the green off, I guess, and which I, I guess kind of makes sense. And uh, I think it's a little spicy uh, for Paul, the second one. He says, I can taste a chili, sage, a bit of heat, uh, but not much else. So then, okay, then Raul's is some poetry. Okay, then we're on John's. They say, where's the rest, rest of it? Uh, quite unfinished, untidy, undercooked. Uh, they do look a mess, uh, the gluey, rubbery. Awfully heavy. Uh, Falafel-like flavor's not bad, though. Uh, Kim Joy, they say, neat, artistic, layers nice. Uh, coconut pastry's amazing. Then you get the cooling from the tofu. I like this one. A delicate, flavor good, delicious, flaky, buttery. And she gets a handshake, uh, like, uh, from uh, Paul. So that's impressive. Uh, and, I mean, it's got to be good, feel good for her. And then we get the talking heads sequence uh, afterwards. Uh, let's see what they say here. Uh, it's the first ever vegan week. Uh, trust me. Let's see, they're still eating. On this one, they're still complimenting Kim Joy. They're saying, oh, boy, this is delicious. So thank you, she says. What a relief. Uh, extreme joy. John says, man, vegan does not. I'm still going to smile. But Ruby says, they were underwhelmed. I'm underwhelmed. I got to pick myself back up and carry on. Okay, then they say, okay, you got to practice that one, but not this one. So for this first ever vegan technical, trust me, trust yourselves, and it will work. That's what Peru says. Uh, and they're making pavlovas, uh, which is uh, something we'll explain it when they explain it. Uh, see, I love Sandy, though. She is able to say, okay, this is a trust exercise, a vegan tropical fruit pavlova, uh, which is a vegan meringue discs, uh, no egg whites, a sandwich with coconut pastry, cream, and to tropical fruit, crispy on the outside, marshmallowy on the inside. Lovely. You got two and a half hours to do this. Uh, I was still asking, is that a jacket or shirt? I uh, know. Uh, for, so for the um, meringue, they're going to use aquafava, which is chickpea liquid instead of egg whites. Then we have like table talk with Brew and Paul. What could go wrong? Well, this uh, aquafava meringue is much more fragile. Uh, so they got to remember that. Then we have where they're doing kind of the recipe reading and the whisking. And, uh, they, so then there's talk about chickpea juice, you know, Noel's not sure. And then I think it's Ruby who says, uh, who discovered this? Uh, like who was it to said, well, I'll just whip up some chickpea juice and see what happens. Uh, there's also talk about over or under wh wh whisking it, uh, Trying to figure out, what, has it peaked, uh, and then is it going to hold its shape, which it ends up that it does spectacularly. Uh, then people start piping. It seems all right. They're doing the edges. They're supposed to be doing decorative edges. Uh, uh, let's see. What is Kim Joy does not like something, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, Ruby just said, I'm going to whisk the hank out of chickpea juice. Uh, Let's see, where's this Kim Joy thing? I want to see what happens here. Oh, she doesn't like technical the technical challenges. She really dislikes those ones. Uh, so then they have to bake the meringue so it's dry on the outside. So they do a low heat for one hour, 75 minutes. Stress starts to hit Kim Joy and John. Uh, and they say, that's a fact. You got one hour left. Uh, and then everybody's starting to make the pastry cream. 
uh, coconut milk, corn flour, uh, use of force even. Uh, I think Noel says that to somebody. Uh, then they have a portable inflator. Sand, Sandy tries to inflate uh, Noel with a portable inflator like you'd use to blow up a, a giant pool float uh, that looks like a flip-flop. And that's when we're down to a half hour very quickly getting there. Uh, not for nothing. Uh, why should we wait? Should we cool it? Should we just like, uh, get it out? Uh, Kim Joy's trying to get more crisping. Uh, let's see how much time work fast. Uh, uh, let's see. This is stress. Oh boy. Is it fragile? Uh, I think uh, Ruby's trying to fill her gaps with white chocolate. Like on her uh, meringue. Other people are having other things. Uh, you have 15 vegan minutes left. Uh, what is going on on the screen? Uh, everybody's. This is when the baking's going on. Everybody's trying to say, oh boy, is it going to bake? Maybe I'll turn the oven off and leave it in there. Brian and Raul will do that. Uh, yeah, should we leave it in? Should we take it out? Oh boy. Kim Joy's, yeah, hers is stressed because hers is kind of breaking up. Uh, but, yeah, I don't even know how long to put it in there. Melting white chocolate. Uh, chill the chocolate, put it in. Oh, boy, getting a little bit worried here. we got to work a little bit faster. Going to take it out. Don't want it to be chewy, though. Everything now, everybody's just coming out of the oven, so that's when they do their next round of assembly. Uh, everybody's worried, like trying to get it off the paper, which is hard, and turn it over because it is so delicate. Uh, and some people are successful, and some people aren't. Uh, it is very fragile. I don't know. Kim Joy's she had the hardest time with hers, is breaking apart. Yeah, then Ruby's painting white chocolate on hers. Kim Joy's got hers. Trying to get it in the fridge or the freezer. Better put a wiggle on. Uh, then they're trying to do the, oh, the fruit part is the last thing. Mmm, gloop. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Pass it through a sieve. But it starts to look like pastry cream, that part. Uh, so then they have to do the final assembly of the uh, two things, the meringue, the pastry cream. And everybody's kind of putting it together. John's like, I'm not very good at decorating. Oh, Brian, he sings a song. I don't know what I'm doing. I thought that was funny. Uh, then there's music. Uh, then time is up. Please place your pavlovas. That talk about great alliteration. Please place your pavlovas. Okay, Descri decorative discs. That was another really nice piece of alliteration. Uh, they say uh, Sandy says it when she's talking about them. Uh, then we have the, the judges going over everybody's because it's you know they can't see. They say about Kim Joyce. They say flat disc. There was an issue. It broke up. Uh, it just doesn't taste indulgent. Uh, Raul's, they say, impressive piping, pile or something, marshmallowy, lots of textures. For John's, they say, lazy with piping, cream is delicious, but a bit runny. Uh, Briny, they like the sizes in the meringue. Ruby, they say, nice decoration, and uh, it's cooked well. Manon, so they say, looks nice, very good, well cooked. So place wise, Briny comes or Kim Joy comes in sixth, the Briny fifth, uh, then John, then Ruby, then Manon, then Raul. Also, they do a talking heads here, and his hair is like so sweet. Uh, so we'll get there. Right now, they're still running through everybody's and tasting him. Uh, I thought, like, Manon was going to come in first. Uh, when you rewatch this episode, you say, wait a second. Uh, 
like how things ended up is a bit confusing. Uh, let's see. Fantastic bake. Uh, beautiful job. Uh, just trying to get to the talking heads part here. Bravo. Uh, he says, I can't believe it. I came in first in a technical. Yeah, then they have him interview. He says, geez, I made something good. The judges like it. Uh, Kim Joy says, geez, I get flustered during these technicals. And then John said, I, you know, being in fourth uh, is not great for a week like this week. And he gulps. Uh, outside, then there's, uh, you know, outside shots and stuff like that. Who will make the quarterfinals? Uh, everybody marches in, breathes out through their lips, uh, a lot of breathing out through the lips. They say, okay, what are we looking forward to this week? Uh, they say, well, the bakers, uh, some people are doing good. Some people are not doing so good. Uh, coconut oil has been good. They say, oh, yeah, coconut oil pastry is good, but it's tricky. They say, okay, Manon and Raul are doing good. Everybody else, not good. Kim Joy did really good at first. So eh. and they say, are you going to make a Hollywood, Paul Hollywood vegan cookbook? He goes, nope. Okay, and also Noel's shirt is a zip shirt, so maybe it is a jacket. So they say, okay, Paul and Prue want you to make a vegan celebration cake that would be the centerpiece of a party that or a happening if it was the 60s. Then we get a little starting sequence. Uh, uh, John has a very short microplane, the shortest microplane I've ever seen. Uh, I said, wait a second, maybe that's, I don't know if that's better or not. I don't have a microplane myself, but I've used one. Uh, talk about seeming indulgent. That to me seems indulgent. I mean, not really, because when I use it, but uh, you see, I don't really need it because I have that on my, I think, my, I have it on my grader. It's just not as good as a microplane. But for the number of times I would use it, don't really need it. Uh, make a cake just as tender. Uh, get it over fast. Oh, because you got to get it in the oven fast because uh, if you're using bicarbonate of soda and vinegar with the rice, that's to taste amazing. You say, okay, traditionally a cake sponge would be made of uh, one thing. Paul says, when I'm coming to judge this, it's just like it better be as good as a non-vegan cake. Uh, but yeah, traditionally a sponge, you'd have eggs and butter to give flavor, height, and texture. But with none of that in the tent, you got to go uh, with find harmony in the alternatives uh, to do a flavorsome, well-structured bake, dairy-free margarine, oil, uh, vegan margarine again. Uh, some people are using coconut oil, soya milk, sunflower oil, coconut milk, coconut extract. Uh, like, and then even Kim Joyce says, yeah, vegan cakes, it's about the speed. So they say, what, what's your showstopper, Kim Joy? She goes, fox-themed birthday cake for a friend. Fox-themed? Yeah, that's his spirit animal, fox. Uh, his spirit animal's a fox? That's what I said. And uh, foxes are cute. A second woodland creature of the week with vanilla biscuits, a two-tiered cake, uh, lavender and lemon curd, inspired by her travels. Uh, when I went on holiday, I had lavender lemon curd ice cream, and it was my favorite ever. So I want to use those flavors. And man and Sue in an apple-spiced cake, kind of a bit like a carrot cake. And looking for the same kind of texture, bottom tier will be a lemon sponge. Oh, this is ruby, and top tier will be a chocolate sponge cake. Uh, John's doing chocolate and orange based on a sitcom, Only Fools uh, Kiss Horses. I, never heard, I, I haven't heard of that one, but, I mean, maybe I did talk about it last year when I went through that list of holiday specials. I guess I'll have to look that one up. His is like uh, orange buttercream. Del Boy. Oh, I guess I have, because that sounds familiar. Uh, Rahul's doing, making his bicarbon vinegar uh, to get the cake going up. Uh, everybody's setting their ovens, 160, 180. 
Bryony's doing a cake for her brother's 30th birthday, which she didn't make him a cake. Uh, and he doesn't eat dairy. So she says, I wish I made him this maca cake. Uh, Paul talks about his high expectations, I think, because of the maca or mocha, some people would say in the U.S. Uh, Buttercream with no butter. Are you going to use chickpeas? No, no chickpeas in this. Uh, vegan butter. The knoll goes behind Ruby with like a uh, like a fishbowl, a ca- actually a cake, a clear cake cover, pretending it's like a space helmet behind her. And Ruby says to Sandy, "How do you deal with him?" Man and cake has three layers. Uh, and we see Raul's stress, uh, and they say, good morning. Uh, but he has a beautiful, like, story. Uh, he says, yeah, making this cake is a tribute to my grandmother. Uh, and he says, they say, okay, like, uh, what, what are you doing? He goes, well, it's a tribute to my grandmother because uh, when my grandfather passed away, uh, in India, like, uh, people, like you would give up food. So, so my grandmother didn't have any eggs or meat after he passed for the rest of her life. And he said, I never saw her eating cake. Uh, so this is a tribute to her. And you could see, even see the people's judges faces, like, uh, how touching it would be to hear that in person. Uh, so really beautiful, uh, and, uh, Noel says, yeah, I'm close to my grandma. You're close to your grandma. And, uh, then, then, uh, Ruby's doing one for her cousin, inspired by a cake from my cousin. But when we both, uh, went to get ice cream with our granddad on a trip, uh, it was just day. We ate tons and tons of ice cream. It was like the best day ever. So hers are going to have two of her, the chocolate and the lemon for the ice cream flavors. Uh, then everything starts coming out of the oven. People are like, okay, this is looking good. This looks like proper cake. Uh, this is not too stodgy. Uh, even John kind of started to get happy with his cake. Uh, let's see. What does that say? Let's see. Everybody's taking their cakes out right now. Cakey, cakey. Uh, so far, I mean, for most people, it's like. Uh, they're checking it. They're checking it twice. It looks spongy, proper, uh, holding up quite nicely. Even John says he says, oh, quite claggy. I don't know what that means, but he's nodding in a good way. Oh, no, then he says, really don't know what went wrong. Oh, then Sandy and Noel are shooting balls into a a fake tea kettle that looks like it's, it has grass growing at it. They're like playing a game, like uh, throw the foam ball in the tea kettle. Two all. And then everybody goes back to work. I don't know how much time was left. I didn't see that. Uh, raspberry jam uh, is getting mixed with chocolate and hazelnut. Uh, it all goes well. Sharp lemon curd by Kim Joy. Uh, let's see, decorating. People are getting ready to do their decorations that are going to go on the cake. A lot of flowers getting made. Manon, Raul, uh, buttercream roses, the favorite flowers of his grandma. Sandy says, uh, hey, like, uh, and, and he goes, hi, I'm, you know, and she goes, can't you be more excited when I show up? Uh, she says, hi, you lovely boy. Uh, and he goes, hey, I'm more, you know, like very much like Scoots. Uh, 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 then Kim Joy's working on her biscuits uh, or cookies. Uh, that'll be Fox cookies. Uh, let's see. Noel likes maca or mocha. She, he goes, yeah, sometimes I have to get Paul a ma- maca. He likes them too. And Bannon's decorating to take a cake. And then everybody's trying to keep make sure the cakes are, cakes are moist, like putting sugar or uh, Raul's putting like a coconut flavor with sugar water in there. Some people are doing buttercream. Bryony's doing jam. And then the ganache on the outside. Uh, John has uh, buttercream and orange curd. And everybody's kind of starting to stack, do the outsides of their cake. 
And then a couple, like a half naked and a naked cake, uh, or, or uh, Kim Joyce is semi naked, and uh, uh, Manon says that my cake is naked. I don't understand what that means because it has icing on it. But maybe it just means no other decorations. So there's assembly stress. Uh, Noel sees John's cake. He goes, I want some uh, trousers that look like your cake because it kind of has like a leopard print on there. Uh, but a gold leopard print. We get some really good decorating, especially by uh, Kim Joy and Briny. Uh, but yeah, everybody's just starting to look good. You know, so we have our final uh, thing coming together. People start putting their cakes, uh, stacking them. And that part is stressful because not everything's even. You don't want your cake to collapse. Extremely wonky. Uh, I don't know if Kim Joy or Raul said that. Uh, yeah, so uh, oh, then Ruby says wonky. Uh, wonky ask or something? Wonky ask cake. Uh, they have 15 minutes left, so everybody's trying to do their decorating. Oh, Briny uh, is done. Briny and Sandy hug because uh, she's done, and then Briny goes and tries to help R- Ruby. John gets a record thing with a Bowie record. He goes, "Oh, this is for Dow Boy." Uh, and uh, then he says, "Come on, kids." Uh, I don't know who says that. Ruby's cake. Uh, it's like uh, st- stress. It's like just not staying steady. Uh, five minutes. Uh, they're trying to put dolls in it. John's trying to help. Uh, and they're trying to trim the dolls. Come on. Let's get it together. Raul, come on. They say, because this is still going. One minute left. Uh, everybody's trying to help one another. Or get there's one Del Boy. Del Boy. John talks about making Del Boy proud. And then it's like okay. And Ruby says I'm wounded. This is not good. Her cake is looks like it's gonna fall apart. She tries to take a breath. Raul's kind of stressed. Uh, and they say off you go, lovelies. Uh, they do have to put them in the fridge. They don't show that part though. I guess. And the cakes thing, Ruby's really stressed. It rolls like, well, I don't know, John, how'd you get your cake to stay together? And then uh, we see Ruby's cake collapses uh, in a very dramatic way while people are watching. And they kind of cringe, uh, cover their faces. She, she finds out her cake has fallen. Uh, holy cow, I can't believe it. Uh, that stinks. Uh, then we have the outside shot. Uh, let's see. After the Ruby uh, Baker, uh, Bakers are all sitting, and they say, "Brian, could you bring yours up first? And hers is a hazelnut mock. They say, "Okay, solid three layers. Uh, raspberry lifts everything. Good job. A nice cake. Well done." Yeah, it's a little bit off kilter, but not as much as the other ones. Uh, they say neat as a pin, though. That's what uh, uh, Prue says. And they get a good, like, hers cuts very well. Uh, so, and Paul's impressed. Uh, and, yeah, they taste it. Then John's goes uh, after Briny. But, yeah, they say, oh, you're br- like a very delicate, uh, different. Uh, John's cake's caved in now. Like his bottom layer kind of sunk. Uh, he smiles awkwardly. He say it looks a bit sad uh, and uh, crude in the decoration. Bruce says, well, the animal print's nice. Uh, and I say, okay, let's cut it. Uh, chocolate sponge, orange curd. And they say the layers are good. They're even. And enjoy the flavor. It's nice and sharp, carries through the orange. Looks hideous, but the flavor's good. Uh, and John says, thank you. Bit too much orange curd, Bruce says, though. And John kind of has a mixed look as he goes off, like, uh, huh. Then Ma- Manning goes, uh, you see, beautiful, man. When you get it right, you get it right. 
But then they go into the cake and they say, oh, boy, wait a second. This is kind of puddingy, heavy, tastes awful, Paul says, rubbery, not a good cake at all. You say, holy mackerel, uh, that's not a... So that was pretty tough to hear, but she had done well in the other two challenges. So overmixed, maybe. Not even, I can't even taste so good at the apple. Then Kim Joy goes, they say, love these colors, unusual. You can relate this cake to you just by looking at it. Really looks good. Powerful. They think they say pudding-like, but there's a balance. It works, especially with these brave flavors. It's well done. And I mean, she has fox cookies or biscuits and a fox, uh, uh, what do you call that, icing. And mushrooms and other cool stuff. And all, like, with cool colors. Uh, Then Rahul goes, uh, they say, what happened here? Because his cake collapsed. uh, And he says, yeah, it was soggy. And, you know, I was worried about it being too dry, so probably did it. They say, okay, the chocolate's good. Too much drizzle, man. The drizzle really messed it up. Too much flavor. You already had good flavors, so you over-flavored it with the drizzle. And he says, okay, great. Uh, Then Ruby goes, they say, this looks a disaster. And they say, okay, so you have two flavors, right? So do we eat it uh, together or separate? And she goes, no, they're meant to be eaten separately, the lemon and the chocolate cake. And they go, okay, wait a second. Both these are very good uh, after they get them out to taste them. More doll than cake. Uh, so they get them out. Okay, that brewer you eat these together? No, no. Either the chocolate or the lemon. Takes the lemon, tastes it. Mmm. Bruce says, I like that. Coconutty, delicious, and lemony. So that's a good sign. I like the lemon cake, Paul says. Raspberries are good too. And I like the chocolate one. Both very good cakes. And he said, You should have put the one on the, the chocolate, was more stable, I think, or the lemon. I don't know. Uh, yeah, the lemon was softer, so it could have been on top. But no way to do do that. Uh, she Then they do talking. She goes, I'm in trouble. Holy no moly. Trying to be positive. They go back to the tent. Then there's, t- I think, then outside, then table talk. Okay, this wasn't a great week. Paul, you weren't even happy. He goes, I'm disappointed. He goes, Manon's cake was awful. Looked great. And they go, what's more important, look or taste? Because Ruby's looked terrible, but it tasted good. And uh, they go, yeah, it's delicious, uh, but you can't discount, you know, the drama for TV. What's her responsibility? This is a challenge. You know, coming in here, Bryony, Ruby, and John, maybe Kim Joy would have been in, in it, but... uh I mean, Bryony did good, so she's safe. Uh, that was good cake. Kim Joy, she's she did amazing. Roland Man and neither one of them actually. But Paul says, "Well, this cake was pretty good. It just was a drizzle." So they say, "Who knows what will happen?" And won't we won't know for two or three seconds? Oh boy. Uh, so then they do the, a bunch of camera shots of everybody waiting. There's hand holding going on. Everybody's trying to stay calm. Well done. Really successful vegan week, Sandy says. Uh, Noel says, ironically, Star Baker is someone who brought animals into the tent uh, in a whimsical, colorful way. And it's Kim Joy, Star Baker. And she gets applause and claps and hugs. Uh, Foxy Baker, Foxy. And then John and uh, Ruby look really stressed. Uh, holy cow. Okay, and Sandy has to give the bad news. She almost, she's really emotional. She says, this, I'm very fond of all of you. So this is not fun. And she goes, the person that's going home is uh, John. And hopefully you can make lemons out of, she didn't say this, but he has a lemon shirt. He hopefully makes lemons out of lemonade. 
Uh, and they all give each other hugs, uh, say, I'm sorry. Ruby can barely move. Uh, Sandy hugs John. Paul hugs John. John says, yeah, I was proud of myself, man. Week seven, I did amazing. Uh, and it go, Peru gives him a big hug. Uh, she goes, yeah, he's got personality. He's different than everybody else. Uh, and Paul goes, yeah, he's a pretty good baker. Uh, well done, my darling. Uh, they say to Kim Joy, star vegan week. I can't believe it. So there's some compliments. And then uh, John and Ruby hug. Uh, Brian and Ruby have a big hug. And Ruby goes, are they positive I'm staying? Uh, man and kisses Ruby's arm. Then there's a big group hug, and they go five left quarterfinals coming up. Uh, got no idea. Peru says who's gonna win. So we'll see you next week. Uh, let me tuck you in. Uh, here you go. Hey, let me get to some thank yous. So I'll tuck you in a little more. Okay. All right. I want to thank everybody that became a patron recently over on uh, wherever. Sleep with me by kids.com slash patron. Uh, let's see here. We got Nicole, Jen, and Julie. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. Leslie, Ariel, and Tiffany. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. Shannon, Nancy, and Melissa. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Christine, Thomas, and Dadley. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. Rebecca, Ashley, and Ryan. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Laura, Catherine, and Kelly. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Good night. Cara, Kayla, and Anne Marie. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. Chris, Forrest, and Nancy. Thanks. 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 And good night. Haromi, and Samantha, and Kara. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. James, Randy, Sue, and Josh. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Wendy, Kepo, and Laura. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. And Kathy and Diana. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Thanks, everybody, for supporting the show. Uh, really appreciate it. I uh, couldn't do it without you. And uh, Sleep With Me exists a free show because if you want to support the show directly through, through Patreon or support our sponsors, that's how we're able to bring, bring you for free. But we also grow, and you can help the show in a free way by simply spreading the word about it in natural conversation online or in person when it comes up. And not just Sleep With Me, but the other podcasts you listen to. And then if you're around someone who's never listened to a podcast before, show them how. Like, uh, show them how on FaceTime or on Zoom or in person if they're in, you know, if they're in your immediate group. And let them know. Let them know about all, all the amazing world of podcasts out there and what podcast app you use. You use, you know, what app. Show them how. Like, say, okay, this is how you subscribe. And maybe they listen to podcast. Maybe you discover some new podcast. You know, it's a great, Just a, it's just such an opportunity to connect. Uh, because there's like a large number of people out there that don't listen to podcasts. And I mean, that's okay if you definitely have tried it, but maybe you just haven't scratched the surface and said, whoa, boy, wait a second. There's a show about, wait, does Will Forte really have a podcast about forts and Forte? No, but uh, Adam Scott and Scott Ackerman do have podcasts about uh, you two and REM and talking heads. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, good night. Uh, thanks so much. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Better Help. You know, if you're having trouble meeting your goals right now, difficulty relationships, trouble sleeping, or if you're feeling stressed or depressed, Better Help is available. Better Help offers online professional counselors who can listen and help. And I've talked about this a lot on the podcast is that I've had a, a lot of struggles throughout my lifetime with mental health and with uh, self medication and stuff. And working with professional licensed therapists has given me the tools to function and flourish in my life. And that's one of the things I'm so grateful for is the relationship I have with my therapist, someone I can talk to who can listen and help me. And with BetterHelp, you simply fill out a questionnaire to assess your needs and BetterHelp will match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. And this isn't self-help or a 
crisis line. This is secure online professional counseling. BetterHelp counselors have a broad range of expertise, which may not be available in your area. There are services available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send unlimited messages to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions and everything you share is confidential. You don't have to worry about going to the office or sitting in a waiting room. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so it's easy and free to change counselors if needed. So you can find someone you're comfortable talking to and working with. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. And this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Sleep With Me listeners can get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash sleep with me. So visit betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R, H-E-L-P dot com slash sleep with me. And you can join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced BetterHelp professional. Thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. As I tuck in here, I just wanted to let you know about two things. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. That's what I was talking about earlier. Free way to just get rewarded for spreading the word about the show. Uh, you could get an ad-free feed, podcast feed. So if you say, well, I can't afford to be a patron, but I want ad-free episodes, you could you can earn that through sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. You could also win a pair of sleep phones. You could get some bonus episodes. So there's a lot you could do. And that's at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. Or if you're already a patron and you say, I don't want, I, I, like, I, I don't want to, like, listen to the ads or I don't want to listen to the thank yous. I just want the intro and the episode. Make sure to set up your uh, patron feed in a podcast app. Just go from your phone or your device. Go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed. That's uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed. And get it set up. Uh, you'll log into Patreon. You'll click allow. And then you can connect uh, your bonus content content or your membership uh, to a great podcast app. There's a lot of free podcast apps there listed uh, and then you'll be good to go. Or if you want to become a patron, you can still use that link and then you can sign up and then you can use that link again to get all your bonus content set up. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed. Thanks everybody.